My fiancé of five years just requested we open the relationship, and that request sent me spiraling. This situation is just so strange and uncomfortable, and wherever I turn to support, I always get brushed off with it's not a big deal or well, he just asked and I lack any real support or validation. I can't go to my parents, so I'm hoping a bunch of strangers on Reddit might offer more help than my social circle did so far. I, 28F, and my fiancé John, 28M, have been together for, as the title says, about five years. To understand the dilemma, I need to give you some background, we both came from very religious backgrounds, though it affected both of us very differently. John became a problem child, running away, causing problems, and eventually finding a crowd his parents would not approve of. Most of the members of this group were a part of the LGBTQ+, smoked pot, engaged in protests and were either atheist or practiced different religion. Although some of the members since have left, this crowd became his current friend group. I won't go into details about each and every one of them, but the main ringleaders are Alex, 35NB, and Avery, 33M. From what I understand, they collected damaged people, as John jokingly said one day, and let them couch surf when things got rough. Alex is some sort of a Nepo baby and Avery works in IT, or something like that. John met them when he was 15. At first, I thought they seemed very cool and couldn't wait to meet them since John equated their relationship to that of a child and a parent, so clearly very important people in his life. But when I finally met them, when we were 21, and in college and home for the summer break, the meeting left me a bit disillusioned. Alex was catty and had snide remarks since I wasn't LGBTQ plus or anything, at most by curious, and Avery treated me like a child, but John said they always need to break new people in, so I tried to think positive and did my best to impress them with what I was studying and what my plans for the future are, both regarding me personally and my relationship. But the more I talked, the more they seemed to disapprove of me. Despite the strange meeting, John seemed ecstatic to see them again and gushed about how much they liked me, so I kept my mouth shut and just nodded along. Now, to understand a bit deeper on who Alex and Avery are, in the town they live in, they're something like local celebrities. Very spiritual, their home is full of souvenirs they accumulated over all their travels, are also married, but their definition of marriage is very different from the traditional one, apparently, they went to some tropical state and took some hallucinogens together, and in their state, they proclaimed everlasting love for one another. Quite a wild concept for someone like me, but I learned to be more open-minded since I left for college. That being said, they also said that they can see auras, whatever that is, and apparently love my fiancés. I don't know what they think of mine, but it probably isn't much. Which brings us to the topic I came here with. Last week, after we got home from work, John sat me down and asked me what I think about being in a polygamous relationship. He said he loves me so, so much, more than is possible, and doesn't know what to do with the rest of it, thinking that it's fair to give it to someone else. I, on the other hand, don't have a limit on how much I can love him, so I said no, and that was that. However, the question has been plaguing my mind ever since. If you knew John just a fraction, you'd know he researches about things long before he actually commits to anything, any lifestyle or relationship changes, whatever. This makes me think that he has already thought about it for a while, and that he also consulted Alex and or Avery about this. I don't want to villainize them, but I know, for a fact, they're not in a monogamous relationship, and they clearly don't like me as the rest of their little group. Again, I don't want to point fingers, and I won't ask John to show me his messages with them unless I have solid proof that isn't just a gut feeling, but I just have this horrible feeling that they, somehow, pulled in John. There's no way he just thought about it suddenly on his own, five years of relationship, and the idea of non-monogamy was never brought up, and now suddenly, just as we're about to be married, he brings this up? I don't buy it one bit, but I can't just go ahead and confront them now, can I? I just don't know what to do. I feel stuck. At home, I pretend everything is fine since my group of close friends told me that I'm just overthinking, and I believed it for a while, but whenever I look at John, all I can think of is, he thinks there's a cap on how much he can love me, and he wants to love someone else. I want to deal with this, but I don't know how. If I bring it up with John, he'll just brush it off as well, or he'll think I'm cheating or don't trust his friends. I worked hard to get their approval, and I know for a fact John shares everything with them, he wouldn't keep this for himself. I just hope that someone here can give me pointers on how to proceed. Thanks. Update. Thank you so much for all the nice replies and genuine advice you've offered. Not to sound cliche, but I didn't expect over a hundred comments and some nice DMs. I'm sorry I didn't respond much, the whole situation was kind of emotionally draining. I figured I'd update when something major happens, and I think this is it. But before I get ahead of myself, let me fill in some blanks in my story. 
Me and John came from similar backgrounds, but my family was a bit less strict, allowing me to go to college since I had great grades. The plan for me was to move back after getting a degree, finding a job, a husband, and living the traditional life, which, obviously, didn't happen because I met John, who literally changed the trajectory of my life. After a year, I switched from my first major to one I liked more and it's been a while since I contacted my parents. They didn't approve, of course, but with John's help, I didn't give in to their demands to come back. Now they know I'm getting married and are invited, but the last time we spoke was about two months ago. John is completely no contact with his parents since 18. I didn't talk about the friend group in more detail at first since I didn't think they were that important, but they do like me, at first, they were obviously a bit unsure since to them, I was a sishit white passing woman, but they warm up to me and I'm proud to call them my friends. The only people who didn't fully accept me are Avery and Alex, and since me and John got together officially, they tend to call me the wife in this strange, almost derogatory manner. It's not an important detail, but it gets on my nerves. Lastly, John is aware that opening up the relationship would lead to me being intimate, physically or emotionally, with other people, but he said it's a great chance for me to explore my by side, though I haven't expressed the desire to really be with a woman in a committed relationship of that magnitude. On to what happened, I shot a message to John two days ago that we need to talk. He works from home, I don't, so as soon as I got home, we sat down to have an in-depth conversation about his proposal. I think he knew what it's going to be about and I had the feeling he seemed almost guilty, but I ignored that and basically word vomited everything that's been on my mind. This is embarrassing because I wrote down most of what the comments advised and was prepared to have a mature discussion, but by the end of my easily 15-minute rant, I was in tears and he had to hold me, otherwise I'd crumble completely. The gist of what I said is that I'm hurt that he wants to fug other people and that he doesn't care that I'd fug other people too, that he believes there's a limit to how much he can love me and that I can't see where this all came from, that he just sprung this on me out of nowhere just a few months before we're to be wed. We tried to have a mature discussion, yes, but by the end, he was frustrated, he did apologize for making me feel less than, but said that my outlook on an open relationship is selfish. What it all boiled down to was that he feels he didn't have enough time to find himself before he committed to me, which is bull's hid because he didn't show any signs of wanting more than I could offer. We were very happy throughout the five years, I really believed I met my soulmate. I realized that, since we were engaged, he seemed to talk more to his friend group and by extension to Avery and Alex. Again, I don't want to paint them as these cartoonish villains, they're really interesting and all, but now I want nothing more than to scratch those self-absorbed, smug smiles off their faces. In the end, I demanded to see his phone, and he was shocked, we had a rule that we can see each other's phones, but we don't share passwords or anything since relationship is built on trust, and neither wanted to be a prison guard in the relationship. Nevertheless, he unlocked and handed over his phone, and I searched his messages, even deleted ones, and found nothing out of the ordinary. Then I checked the call log, and guess fucking what? Hours long calls to and from either Avery or Alex. I was fuming and asked him what the hell does he need to discuss with them this long, and mind you, these dated months back. John eventually caved in and admitted it was them who brought up the idea of open relationship, but they also talked about everything else since they're such a role models. John admitted that he started getting cold feet a while ago and needed a safe place to discuss this. I guess I, his wife-to-be, am not safe? Please make it make sense. Why even marry me, then? He promised we'd go to a couple's counselor and fix all of this, his issues with marriage, the open relationship thing, the whole nine yards, and that he'd book an emergency session with his therapist. That he loves me and wants nothing but to be with me. It was late, so we went to bed, despite how messy this all sounds, I was a bit more reassured by this, I genuinely love him, even if my post doesn't reflect that very well. Though many people said to just leave, I want that to be the last resort, I was willing to jump through hoops to make this work. But guess who's the idiot? This morning, I woke up to an empty apartment and a message on my phone from John, saying that he needs a few days to think this all over and needs space. He didn't say where he was going or when he'd come back. I called and called and messaged everyone I know, but no one can tell me where John is. I told him that he either comes back home in 24 hours, or this is over. As you can imagine, I'm a wreck. I took the rest of the week off and between crying sessions and staring blankly into the wall, I obsessively check my messages in hopes of someone telling me where John is. To be honest, if he's willing to put me through this, I'm not sure I want to be with him. How can you do this to someone you love? 